as we are That's operating globally, we are seeing uh, kind of different ways how open banking uh, approach develops worldwide. There are countries like UK and, and, and the European Union where is a strict regulations and where this requirement is built on, on top of a single bank. We are seeing countries like India where central infrastructure built a single interface for all uh, market players. Actually, who drives these open banking initiatives in markets? Well, when it started in Europe with the PSD2 as a enabler for open banking, I think in many markets around the globe, there is still assumption that first initiative, the driver, is the regulatory authority. That should come with a framework, setting standards and business rules, how open banking should be enabled and uh, adopted in such a country. But I see also tendency that some banks trying to be more proactive and starting to uh, utilize open banking techniques to foster innovation, to engage with fintech, to build different uh, uh, models, how they attract customers, how they sell their products. And I think this demonstrate that it could be also market driven, but still when it was, let's call it centralized, it was more efficient and it's currently more efficient because then there is a common market move towards open banking or open finance. There is a common standard. There is a higher level of interoperability. There is less fragmentation and silos. So what could be advantages if these kind of solutions built by a central bank, as we are seeing that central banks nowadays starts to take more active role on, 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 on these areas. Let's uh, try to understand the role of the regulator, the central bank, because their willingness is to facilitate market development. And if market is fragmented, then it's quite difficult to facilitate that market is moving altogether towards one direction. Therefore, Typically, regulation or common standards is the instrument how the central bank operates. With respect to open banking, then if it's centralized approach, first of all, there could be common framework every market participant can follow. There could be different procedures to avoid well, any tensions between banks and non-banks, for example. There are clear timelines and deadlines where market participants should follow in order to comply. So I think it's first of all about the higher control and uh, well, shorter period of time to ensure that market has adopt, had adopted open banking. From another point of view, banks, central banks can step uh, and, and do even more by supporting technical capabilities of the bank. So they are not only limited with the regulatory requirements, but can deliver certain parts of the ecosystem like sandbox or like, well, the single API gateway for the all banks. Okay, but if central bank jumps in this game, what is then, benef who benefits from it? I as a user, banks or, or why, why to do it for central bank? But just imagine if central bank being a regulatory authority takes an active role in the development of this local payment market. Uh, with such an approach, central bank can get the markets more harmonized, can well follow to avoid fragmentation. And if centralized approach, so again, uh, through different instruments and activities that could contribute to the national payment strategy, that everything is executed in a timely manner. And uh, at the same time, central bank keeps the control to oversee market participants. So I think everyone will definitely benefit. Market participants will get well, substantial support and users definitely, they will get new innovative payment services. Okay, then maybe let's jump in a bit different uh, thing. Uh, new buzzword coming out PSD3. 
What does it mean? What is your bet? It's something good, something bad. bad? I uh, asking both of you. What do you think? What what will be outcome from this? It's worth to mention that while PSD two aim to enable new innovative services, PSD three, well, is trying to fix existing gaps and follow the market uh, to well to frame current market developments, but. You may imagine if well the regulation in place trying to catch up all the time and address market needs that it demonstrates that the market is evolving very rapidly and the new service is evolving very rapidly. The same applies to the platform itself. So it means every bank should follow market developments and regulatory trends and be able to develop the platform all the time when it is implemented cent centrally so if the regulator providing the centralized platform and is taking care about the ecosystem it's much more easier to help the markets and direct the market towards the well, innovation that is coming from regulation or from well, different countries and regions and uh, very important uh, to understand that PSD3 provide uh, uh, more added value services and existing services. Yes, uh, because uh, uh, European Union uh, to try to understand uh, business needs. It is uh, business needs uh, in Yacom area, in uh, leasing companies, in, uh, in credit uh, companies. Yes, uh, and. Uh, very important to also understand that uh, PSD3 also start thinking about user experience. How I can uh, uh, create more faster uh, payment initiation, yes? How I can create more faster this, yes? Because if we compare right now, for example, Apple Pay Journey and account to account payment via my mobile phone, it is very big difference and very big steps. And PSD3 also start to focus in that way. And this is very important because um, uh, who is a user of, of bank products? I, you. And if you do not have possibility to pay one, two, three, you do not use this. I would like to also look on a bit technical aspects. Dennis talked a lot of this centralized approach when uh, open banking is built on centralized level, one of them says you are experienced in building the centralized solutions. What you would advise, what like the central infrastructure sh should start with, what they need to consider when they are building this centralized approach, because it should be quite complex one. You need to create complex. rule books, yes, participants yes. and... Yes, it is. of course it is uh, all this, uh, how to say, starting point is to uh, where country together with central infrastructure, this can be a central bank or, or central clearing house, uh, start understanding, yes, we needed uh, some uh, regulation similar to PSD2. Regulation regarding KPIs, security, uh, DTPR, strong customer notification, and that. Start to understand this, start to write uh, papers, start to agree, uh, start consulting and discussing with banks, with uh, fintech association, etc. And of course, in many countries, uh, that central banks start to understand that, hmm, okay, Monday it is, it is very great, but banks do not like this. Of course, it's because it's a direct cost. And maybe we need to, how to say, build our own infrastructure, central infrastructure, where we as this infrastructure, all banks will be connected in central way, and we will control this traffic. Uh, we will investigate uh, uh, use, uh, users' NTTP requirements, and we will be mine, uh, how to say, single point in country for uh, financial APIs in mandatory way, first. But uh, secondly, uh, banks are thinking, hmm, uh, via this platform, we can um, publish a lot of uh, added value services uh, and start to think, hmm, maybe I can publish also all the central bank and clearinghouse products with this as 40 TPs. And this is 
I'll call it to PSD free, where PSD free to highlight it, access to central infrastructure. But many countries in Asia, in Africa, in uh, uh, thinking about this, and 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 in many countries together with us, like a vendor, do this. Yeah, good, good. Thanks. And uh, one more thing. Uh, usually we are seeing these press releases when theater every lunch at some some new open banking platform and everything looks very very good. But still, usually projects has some. Some difficulties and, and, and what what the central infrastructure should consider. What uh, is there internally? Inter internally, it is of course it is, it is huge project uh, from technology uh, from technology perspective, from deployment perspective, from any kind of technicality because it is uh, like a multi tenancy uh, in both way uh, technical platform where uh, central infrastructure operate with banks because central infrastructure also uh, want to charge some fees with uh, banks and also want to charge some fees uh, who is using these APIs. It is can be uh, MNO, FinTechs, etc. And from the te technical, uh, technical perspective, in central, in platform, of course, this is uh, a uh, very complex architecture uh, and uh, full multi-tenants, uh, how to say, approach uh, uh, regarding uh, how central bank uh, can manage these parties. Because it is like a, I'm a central, I have a parties who want to utilize the API product and secondly, this is my banks in country. And of course, this will be all banks in country finally. And this is, of course, uh, to manage this, secure this, uh, provide normal uh, and very reliable approach to end customers. Of course, this is a huge project. This is not a straightforward uh, uh, three uh, months and voila, all is good. No, it is a huge pro pro project, very complex project. But finally, finally, if if such a central structure is going live, of course, all parties is happy. Yeah, great to hear. So, to summarize what, what I'm hearing like from this business, from central bank approach, there is a really business case to drive more centralized approaches by central banks or, or processors or clearing houses. Those are not easy projects, but it those are easy. doable projects. Of so. course, doable because uh, right now what we see in uh, Europe, uh, most uh, e-commerce uh, gateways, largest e-commerce gateways or processing centers also do this role, provide uh, centralized uh, uh, open banking uh, services to the banks or other entities, financial and financial array. Yeah, this so it's a diff different payment schemas actually who competes yep. with each other. Okay, thank you.